Welcome to Self Discovery Media Network, formerly known as Self Discovery Radio. Each week we bring you illuminating shows from those making a difference in the lives of others. They've taken their own journey, they're here to share their skills, their wisdom to help you on yours. You can see more about us at selfdiscoverymedia.com and please listen to our wonderful collection of shows. Our next show is The Wellness Journey podcast series presents Spice of Life, a seasoned woman's guide to renewing her essence. On this journey, you will find all of the flavors you thought you'd lost. It's there. You have it, especially while in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. On this show, experts in the field of wellness will give you the chance to be restored, re-energized, and renewed so that you can be successful along your wellness journey. My name is Lennis Woods Mullins, and welcome to the Wellness Journey podcast series. This month, or over the next couple of months, we're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to my heart. The name of this particular podcast series is A Seasoned Woman's Guide to Renewing Her Essence. And the reason why I decided to name the podcast series this, I thought, well, you know, when you're going to be listening to this, it'll be towards the beginning of the year, January, February. And usually around this time of the year, we're thinking about how we want the rest of our year to go. And how you should want the rest of your year to go is to continually feed what makes you you. And if you're feeling kind of lost in that, then one of the things that should be at the top of your list is renewing your essence, renewing your vibrancy, re-energizing your spirit, uh, doing the things that are necessary to take good care of your body and your mind. And today I'm really excited because I have someone that's gonna be talking to you about that very thing things that you can do to have optimum health. Today we have with us Peggy Weeks, and she is a health consultant, a speaker, and author of A Mix of Two World Nature's Best from the East and the West for Optimum Health. Her book is aimed to help all of us, as well as herself, she said, on achieving that journey for optimum health through a variety of natural means. A Mix of Two Worlds encourages all of us to go back to the basics, to a place where it all began, and to use nature as it was intended, as well as other natural means to improve our health. Fantastic. I'm so excited to have you here, Peggy. Welcome to the Wellness Journey podcast series. It's wonderful to have you here today. Thank you, Lynn, and thanks for having me. You know, I think your topic is so important, and um, when I first heard from your publicist, I thought, wow, I definitely want to get her on the show because these are the kinds of things, nuts and bolts, that we should be talking about, especially as we age. And many times, especially when you first turn 40, maybe 40, 45, we're still kind of taking some things for granted. Although we're aware that we're older, we're still kind of living like we're maybe 20 or 30 in terms of what we're mm -hmm. eating, maybe not as much exercise, we were maybe not as focused as we should be. So given that, why do you think it's important for women after 40 especially to get their focus on taking better care of their minds, their bodies, and their spirits? Well, I think it's important uh, just to help with that transition into the other area of life. Because if you don't take care of yourself, um, what's going to happen when you get older may not be what you think it would. Mm -hmm. So in order to have uh, facilitate an easy transition, I think it's absolutely important that you start taking care of yourself um, physically, mentally, and, you know, just spiritually. So yeah. you have to pretty much get into that zone where it's no longer, oh, I'm up all night partying all, you know, all weekend, but you have to be cognizant of what's going on. Be mindful of your body, be in tune with your body. You know, know that, you know, when something is not right and, and be able to, to address it. But you don't want to get to the point where, oh, I'm suddenly at the doctor's office, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. You want to kind of have an intervention before. So I, I tend to tell people, look at it this way. You have a car. You want the car to carry you through to a certain point, to the end. In order for that car to take you through, you have to, you know, do maintenance. And part of being healthy and having optimum health is maintaining your body and keeping it so that it can take you to 
the end and when it takes you there, when it gives out, that it's a smooth ride. So it's all about the transition and maintaining, you know, the path and the ride that you're going. So it's smooth and you get there and, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be not as, you know, as bumpy or, you know, there are people who are suffering with a lot of issues and ailments and stuff. And there's something that's uh, inevitable that you can't prevent, you can't avoid. It's going to happen because it's going to happen. But the other things that you can fix, you need to fix them. So um, how did you become so passionate about the idea of uh, living optimally and, um, you know, eating well, exercising well, all those different things that go into being well? How did you become so passionate about it? Well, I've always been of the mindset of not wanting to have a lot of, you know, chemicals and stuff in my body. Mm -hmm. I didn't always, you know, live this kind of way but you know as you get older and you see people around you you know people are suffering from this and suffering from that you realize that hey you you really have to take care of yourself and a few years ago um my mother got sick um she was taking care of herself like she was exercising regularly she, you know she ate well she made sure she got her sleep at a certain time she was on schedule it's like she had to go to bed at nine o'clock or nine thirty she was in bed you know whatever she was working out at the gym but nonetheless she got sick and um from getting sick it, it was a touch and go situation whereby like you know she kept going to the doctor she had an issue and they couldn't find out what was wrong with her so they kept sending her home kept sending her home and they couldn't kind of come up with a diagnosis so eventually she kind of, we found her, well, I didn't, but uh, my son and, and someone else found her at home on the floor. She was, you know, um, passed out, not responding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They had to take her to the hospital, took her to the hospital. They could not revive her. She was still unresponsive. Um, they found out that she had, um, there was uh, fluid in her heart. Um, not sure how they got there and they, they were trying to figure out how to do it. Anyways, a comedy of errors ensued and then it turns out that they tried to get rid of the fluid in her heart and the needle or whatever it is that they put in, they couldn't get it out. So, so they had to, um, she was at one hospital, so they had to call to another it was pretty much, they called us into a room and said, you know, come and see your goodbyes, this is it. You know, we can't help her, but we have to see how we can best assist. So they called up another hospital in another region and they said, okay, here's what, we have two options. Um, we either transport her downtown to the next hospital or um, we will have to get um, them to guide us as to how to do this. Um, so they got her into uh, uh, the ambulance and took her down to um, the hospital downtown. And then the um, doctor came to us and said, well, you know, here's the issue. You know, apparently she had a heart attack. Um, but as a woman, it went undiagnosed. And they just sent her, you know, kept sending her back. So one of her she had a, a pulmonary embolism um whereby the the artery had dried up and kind of cut off the blood flow to the heart so in terms of surgery they had to do surgery she had a 30 percent chance of survival do i want to sign off on that and i said well you know what i believe in god and i believe in miracles and all things are possible so I signed off on it and they went in and they said, okay, well, yeah, we will do the operation. However, here are the odds. If she survives, then she will become a vegetable. So do you really want to go through this? And I said, yeah, sure. I believe and um, it's not in my hands. So she, um, we, they did the operation and she came out of the operation. Um, she was paralyzed on one side. 
And I, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, so what's next? Anyways, she made it. Suffice it to say, she made a miraculous recovery. And um, she, you know, she would show up, and then they would like be like, oh, you're not who we were expecting. We expected somebody to be in a wheelchair and stuff like that. But you know, thank the Lord that she's Fine. healthy and happy. But I think that her recovery was all, had a lot to do with the fact that she was very much on target with her sleeping. Mm -hmm. She was on target with going to the gym every, well, maybe not every day, but a few times a week she was at that gym. Mm -hmm. And she was also making sure she ate on time and she, you know, she ate properly. She wasn't a junk food eater or anything like that. And I think given that and faith and prayer and all of these things combined, she was able to survive something that they had given up on her for. Like, as I said, she had a 30% chance of survival. So I, from that, I realized then, and I couldn't figure out why is it that they could not, at the point, at that time, had figured out what was going on with her um, in order to prevent this, this, this issue. Um, and yes, it is, um, you know, our responsibility to take care of ourselves. It's our responsibility to follow up. Um, you know, we go to the doctor, they say, you know, or don't have a, 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 a diagnosis for you. It's pretty much your, um, it's your um, priority. It's, you need to go and pursue this further to Advocate, see exactly yes. what's going yes. on. Exactly. You know, your, your story is um, such a cautionary tale on several forefronts. Um, yes. We do take our bodies for granted. And many times also, instead of advocating for ourselves, we go to our doctor's offices and they tell us whatever. We go in there, we lie down and say, okay, what's wrong? You know, and aren't really showing up in our lives in terms of coming prepared to those doctor's appointments with questions and then we're followed, they don't have answers. Uh, second opinions, whatever it takes to find out what's going on. So was there anything that, looking back um, at your mom's lifestyle, anything that she might have done differently that could not have caused that? Or was it just one of those, was just an anomaly? Uh, no, I think what it is, is that um, what has happened too, and as, as you know, we go on a lot of these, um, you go in and you get older and different things happen and they put you on different types of medication. And oh. I think it was um, a fallout from, it was one of the side effects of probably one of the medications um, wow. because you know, she had, um, uh, the, and within the family, there's a thyroid problem. So mm -hmm. she's on, you know, on that type of medication. Mm -hmm. And then um, osteoporosis. So, you know, they give you all these things, these drugs to help fix issues. And then from these pills then you get you know different side effects yeah and you know because she does not have or did not have a history of of, of um a, a you know a pre-existing condition that would say that she would have a heart attack right um you know so no one else in the family that we are aware of had a heart attack mm -hmm. or you know was predisposed to having a heart attack so you know, I, I for me, it, it was just, you know, from there, I thought, okay, so I would like to give back, um, you know, and how do I start giving back? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted to, you know, based on the therapy that she had to go through, she had to learn how to walk again. She had to learn how to speak again. Mm -hmm. She had to learn to go through all of these things. And I thought, well, how can I best get back? And how can I help? And I thought, well, don't have that kind of time to go back to, you know, to go back to school, to become, I don't want to, you know, become a doctor per se. I don't want to, you know, I thought about becoming, you know, a speech therapist. And, but then the whole process was just going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, just trying to find how can I best get back and help people. And you know, as time went on, I, I got involved with a company that promoted all natural health products. And um, here I am today. That's what I've been doing for the past few years. Well, that is wonderful. And it is a cautionary tale. It sounds like it ends happily. But, you know, I think one of the things with medication that I always tell my clients all the time 
many times medication fixes symptoms, not causation. And because exactly. they are not organic or natural, they are synthesized, they are chemicals, mm -hmm. they might cause, they might fix symptoms on one area. They're definitely not going to deal with causation more than likely. And many, many times they will cause side effects. And they're exactly. never quite sure what those side effects are going to be because guess what? Mm -hmm. Everybody is different. That's yes. why they call it a medical practice. Uh, they are practicing on you. They're not quite sure. They don't have all the answers. And all the more reason to um, advocate that you are living a lifestyle that you're talking about, which is preventative in nature. So you don't necessarily have to have those issues um, that put you in a place where you're uh, having to use a lot of medication. Now, I know that one of the philosophies uh, that you talk about um, in your book has to do with an acronym called NESS. Uh, yes. Significance of that. What is NESS and why is it important? Okay. So NESS to me is nutrition. Mm -hmm. Why is it important? Because without any of those things, uh, you will have issues. Mm -hmm. So you don't um, get the right nutrition. Mm -hmm. Your body, again, goes in, can be starvation or whatever. You have to have all the right nutrients and minerals in your body in order to remain healthy and to be healthy. Um, exercise. We know it's advocated. You must exercise. Um, it, it helps with people who have blood pressure. It helps if you have heart disease. It helps... It just helps in everything. You have to keep moving. If you don't keep moving, then the body seizes up. You have other issues. Mm -hmm. And sound sleep. Yes, there are some of us who we run on, you know, we are always ever busy, you know, staying up, having to finish this deadline, meet this deadline. But if we don't get sleep, we, our bodies need to rejuvenate. This is the time that the body kind of, you know, you know, the body replenishes itself. Mm -hmm. So it needs to rest. You know, the body was made to function and then it needs to rest. Again, let's go back to the car analogy, whereby if you keep running a car mm -hmm. and you don't rest the car after a certain time, there's, the car is going to overheat. Cars were not meant to build to run consistently without shutting off. It's the same with us. We were not made to run consistently without resting. Yeah. And, you know, um, for those people who, are, who believe in God, even when God created, we believe in creation, when God created the world, he created a sixth day. On the seventh day, he rested. That's right. So if we can rest, we need to rest as well. And we cannot run seven days, uh, six days straight without any rest. We are required. This is the way that we were wired, that we have to rejuvenate, we have to replenish, we have to refuel in order for us to continue on to the next day and to the next thing that we have to do. So I think it's absolutely important. And as I said, I saw it uh, being used with my mother in the sense that if she had not um, been, you know, doing these things, I don't think that her recovery would have happened. Mm. Um, and it would not have happened as quickly as it did. Um, I also have another friend um, of mine who, this is a young, younger uh, gentleman who had a heart issue, but because he was always exercising and stuff, his recovery period again was very quick. So mm -hmm. it's all about, you know, taking care of yourself. So we're not saying that if you exercise, you eat right and you get a lot of rest that nothing is going to ever happen to you. It just means that when it does, mm -hmm. because something will happen, that your recovery period is usually much faster than if you didn't do these things. And that's very easy to remember, NESS, which just stands for nutrition, exercise, and making sure you have a sound sleep. Now, I know that you um, did some study about all other different kinds of health alternatives mm -hmm. in the East and the West um, in terms of the different things that we can do to stay well. What were some of your key findings when it came to uh, um, attaining good health using a mix of the Eastern and Western philosophies? So some of the things, I think it goes hand in hand, um, 
you, you can mix both of them so well together in order to, to obtain optimum health. So for instance, traditional Chinese medicine, um, you can go with this from either taking the traditional herbs or you can go approach it from having, let's say, acupuncture, mm -hmm. acupressure, any of those things. You can just Tai Chi, you know, form of exercise. You know, you can put those things together with um, using, let's say, some other Western practices like being, you know, going to the chiropractor because that's a Western uh, um, practice whereby you can go, you can have chiropractic. And actually, there are some um, practitioners who actually use this both together. Mm -hmm. So you may go in to see a chiropractor who does um, acupuncture as well as chiropractor within that same treatment. And that they use both of them together in order to, you know, make sure that they have, you know, you get a maximum um, effectiveness from their treatment. You can use other things like um, from the East, from the East as well. You have um, yoga, and this is something that a lot of people are using in, in, in the Western world. People are aware of yoga, and they use yoga. You know, it helps to calm you. It helps people who have um, high blood pressure and stuff like that. Learn how to breathe. Learn how to, you know, use breathing techniques to help to calm you down and burn the pressure down. You know, these are all different things that you can use to implement. They have this, um, this is something that's more recent, uh, which is called um, facial, um, facial stretching, whereby you, you just mm. stretch, stress, stress, excuse me, stretch mm -hmm. the body um, mm -hmm. in, use, in terms of using the, the major muscles mm -hmm. and stretching the body out to, you know, to make you, you more flexible and to, you know, to help you with specific things like people who have sciatic issues, they can use that sort of stuff to help them. Um, so it, it's all a matter of, you know, even using the natural products again, you know, the natural products that you can get from the East as well and products from the West. So if you put all these things together, you blend them together, you use one modality or you use certain products and you just put them together and, you know, it will be more effective to have both instead of just one or the other. For, for women who are over 40, or let's say in particular for menopausal women, what kinds of nutrition can you recommend to them or do you think would be important that they should definitely be doing? Or, or, should, they, or should their eating habits change at all? Or are there foods that they should be eating that can help support them as they go through the various symptoms uh, that happen in menopause? Um, I don't, I, I can't say that I would recommend mm -hmm. certain particular types of foods mm -hmm. however um, one of the things that I would recommend um, is there are certain teas and and this is where I kind of mixed a couple of things um, there is a particular tea that you can have it's mm -hmm. called a pine pollen tea and that pine pollen tea helps um, to balance the hormones mm -hmm. so then you don't have to have any um, hormonal treatments or, you know, estrogen or anything like that, whereby it can, you, so you can take a tea and then there are specific different um, other natural products that you can take. So for instance, like I've been through it, um, maybe I'm going through it, I don't know what I'm doing, but somewhere along the line, but um, I've been taking the tea and um, I have been taking, there's another product that I take, which is good for people who are going through menopause it's called a uh, phyllis antler and what it is actually it's the antler of the deer mm -hmm. and they use that that helps to regenerate the cells mm -hmm. so the cells because you know the antler uh the deers their antlers they re their antlers grow back mm -hmm. you know the antlers fall off and they they regenerate ah. so they use the prop from this and it's it's either um there's one university that I know of who's done a lot of um, study on this, um, which is in Alberta. And it's, some people call it velvet antlers, or some people call it um, phyllos antler. It's called, and I'm sorry, some people call it velvet antlers? Velvet antler or phyllos antler. Okay. Um, this is something I actually have on my website if people wanted to go on and check okay. it out. Um, and it is good for people who are going through menopause. I kind of call it the, 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 the magic potion mm. because it does a lot 
other things besides that. Um, so I, for me personally, because I've gone through it or is, uh, I'm going through it, and I use, I've been using the tea, which is the pine pollen tea again, balance out the hormones, it, it's good for you. And I use the omega-3, very important. I always recommend omega-3. And omega-3 is something that you use from, you know, childhood to forever. It's something that should always be part of your everyday, um, in your medicine chest, pretty much. Um, something that you should be taking. So that to me is absolutely um, those three things for sure. Um, so you have a tea that can balance out the hormones. You have um, something like the phyllos antler. And of course you have your, uh, your, your um, omega-3. And some people take it, whether it's um, a fish oil or seal oil, and you get the omega-3 from either of those as long as it's, it's, it's a fish. But yeah, you, you get that. Now, in your book, A Mix of Two Worlds, Nature's Best from the East and the West for Optimum Health, uh, what is it the message you want to send or you want people to walk away with when they finish reading your book? I want people to walk away with the fact that, hey, maybe I should start being more proactive with my health instead of being reactive. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting for something to happen to me, let me try and head off anything that could possibly come as much as I can. So I know that I am taking care of myself. I know that I am doing all the things that are necessary to prevent certain things if I can. Okay. So it's a matter of preventative as opposed to trying to find a fix once something has happened. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. being preventative is, is so important. And I, I have daughters who are now in their 30s. And, but when they were in their 20s, I used to tell them all the time, what you're doing right now in your 20s exactly. is definitely going to influence how you're going to be when you get my age, in my 60s. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I also believe that it's never too late to make a lifestyle change. Right. Doing something, no matter how small it might seem initially, is better than doing nothing at all. So exactly. if someone uh, were to try to make a choice of what kind of lifestyle change they should make in order to be well, and in the past they just haven't done anything, they haven't exercised, they're not drinking water, nutrition is fast food, what would you suggest? What would be the incremental change that you would suggest that they should make? As you said, any little change is, is, is absolutely important and would do a whole world of good. But first of all, I think what you would maybe want to do is start by taking stock of your life. Mm. See, what am I doing? Uh, what is not helping me? What, you know, what could I change? So I think it's first take stock. Like sometimes I have uh, my customers and I say to them, well, you know, first of all, I want you to make a list. Uh, usually they're on top of, you know, wanting to get, you know, be healthier. So I say, make a list, all the things that you're taking. I want to see all the supplements, everything that you're taking. Let me just see what you're doing. Okay. Because a lot of us, we go out, we go to the store and we just buy supplements. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And we don't know why we're buying them because somebody happened to say, oh, take this or take that. But we don't know exactly what our body needs. Okay. So the first thing you may want to do is, in, you know, go and get checked, first of all. If, you, if you're in my area, come and see me. We have a test that we can do, um, which kind of, it's a, like a body scan. And from that body scan, we can, you know, make recommendations to you as to what um, minerals or vitamins or, you know, we think that maybe you should be using because the printout app pretty much tells us what you're low on, what the body is low on, and what you may be needing. So start with that or go to see your doctor next time you go and have a physical. Say, I want to get tested for certain things. Have that doctor test you. And from there, then you can go and know that you should be taking vitamin C or vitamin A or vitamin E. You know, you start that way. The other thing is, if you're not part of a gym, you don't have to be part of a gym to stay healthy. Start walking. Start walking more. Just go out. 15 minutes, increase it to 30 minutes, increase it to, 
you know, instead of taking the elevator, take the stairs. Mm -hmm. Instead of, um, you know, sitting all the time, you know, you're at work, you get up, you move around, you go to the bathroom, go to the kitchen, you know, just move a little bit more. It's interesting because one of the things that I like to do, um, because I'm sitting, I have an online business, so um, I I have a ball that I sit on. I'm sitting on it right now because it makes me a little bit lower, but it engages my muscles because, you know, in order to stay steady on the ball, believe it or not, you're actually engaging muscles. But I also do exercises. I swim on my hips while I'm sitting there either way. Sometimes I'll take a quick break and, you know, do some things with the ball between my legs and move it up and down. And these are just incremental but I make sure I get in my 30 minutes of movement and exercise a day. I always take mm-hmm. a brisk walk in the morning just to kind of wake me up. Okay. And these are all simple things mm-hmm. that you do, but you just have to make up your mind that you want to do it. You want to uh, exactly. you know, make a change for the better because I'm telling you, without that, we were created to be stick figures. We're not like this. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, we have joints you know, that move yeah. and that we're supposed to be using. That's right. And we need to get moving so the blood can start circulating to those exactly. Places. And exactly. what happens as we get older, we get more sedentary. We're not moving as much, and then you start having problems with the organs. Organs basically start shutting down because they're not giving the nutrients in the blood, you know, the way it should be. And you know, it's it's downhill after that. So I'm glad you yeah. mentioned that thing about movement because it's yeah. it's so important. Now, for people who want to get your book, where do they go? Well, you can go to my website, which is PeggyWeeks.com, yes. and it's P-E-G-G-Y, Weeks is W-E-E-K-E-S.com, and you can go there right now. The book is not available at the moment, but once it becomes available, uh, people can either order uh, a copy of the book, or they can get a free downloadable copy of it um, online, so they can just go in, put in their information, um guaranteed your information is not going to be sold to anyone or okay. anything um it will just be used for my purposes of informing you about my book or anything else that i may have um and let you know once the book is available okay and if you wanted to um check out any of the products yes. that i recommend or you know services that i recommend you can go on my there as well and you can see, and anyone who wants to have a little chat with me, um, you can also request that once you're online. Just fill out a form there that says, you know, mm-hmm. um, you want to meet with, talk to me, or meet with me, or whatever, depending on where you're up, where you are, and um, I'll be happy to get it back to okay. you. And for those of you who are uh, actually on the show page, you can see the link that's going to. Peggy's site, and there you'll find all kinds of great information. I'm also going to post uh, the link uh, directly to her products page. Evidently, you um, um, have, um, um, uh, is it Green Living or uh, uh, Green World, I believe? Uh, yes, yeah. so I have Green World uh, products, which I'm promoting. There's also another set of products. So Green World is specific, actually, to certain types of product products to um, that would address particular issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's say people who may have, and people who want to use natural products to address these issues. Okay. So like, let's say, for instance, people with high blood pressure, people with diabetes, any of those things, any, any, if anybody wants to um, use natural products, we have those specific. There is also another company that I recommend, um, which they have more everyday natural products. Mm-hmm. So these everyday natural products like dish, um, dish detergent, um, laundry detergent, all these different things, these, you know, I promote those and that's for another company um, that I, you know, I've started using the products recently. The cosmetics are amazing, natural. Oh, good. And I, I must say they work because I, my skin is highly sensitive mm-hmm. and I find that I started using their products and so far nothing yeah, has skin. happened yeah. and they are, skin is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. And they are very reasonable. The prices are amazing. Okay. So, you know, if people awesome. want, I don't have that information on my website, but if people are interested, the company is called Atomy and, um, you know, they can get in touch with me as well and let me know whether or not they're interested in just having 
everyday stuff that's natural. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I can definitely tell them where they can find that sort Fantastic. of Fantastic. Well. Very good. It's all about that. Well, Peggy, thank you so much about helping us achieve optimum health as we age, especially for those of us who are over 40. It's so important. And you are a walking advertisement of that because you look fabulous. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So do you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And thank you to all of you who've listened or those who are watching this. We appreciate you tuning into the Self-Discovery Network. And don't forget that every Tuesday we have new shows about wellness for women over 40 that are going to give you the tips, tools, and techniques that you need to be able to move forward and to be healthy and well, or as Peggy Week says, optimally well. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you again next time. Join me next week as we dive into other ways on how to live in a way that is beneficial to your mind, body, and spirit. Till next time, keep that spice of life candle burning. For more wonderful shows like this, please go to selfdiscoveryradio.com, podcasts and see our lineup. And if you wish to support us, we have a funded button. Please stay tuned for our next show.